Hi, I haven't done this kind of video in a while, so I'll introduce it again. Basically, I'm going to review a type of government and grade it based on its ability to stay in power, its ability to be fair to its people, and how much I like it after all is said and done. So I hope you enjoy this one, because today I'm grading the dictatorship, or more specifically, authoritarianism. According to Wikipedia, there are five types of authoritarian governments. The autocracy, despotism, enlightened absolutism, the militant dictatorship, and totalitarianism. Let's tackle each of them one by one. The autocracy is the most hated dictatorship, wherein one person has unlimited political power. But why? It's not that bad if the right person is in charge. I've got a hunch that people hate this kind of government because only one person is in charge. And they aren't that person. We all want to be kings and queens of something. And having unlimited power over our fellow man is a real confidence booster. In my experience, the most motivated reason to pursue power is to have the ability to fulfill our goals. Every creature with a brain has an agenda of some sort, whether it's to eat, fornicate, or have fun in some other way. The people on the top, or as I like to call them, the alphas, have the best chances of doing those things, and the people at the bottom don't. We all want to eat and fornicate, but the problem lies in the scarcity of resources. If everyone is an alpha, then everyone needs the same amount of resources that everyone else has. However, because there aren't enough mates and food to go around, those without power are left horny and hungry. That's a bit off topic. Anyway, my favorite version of the autocracy is Plato's Philosopher King. In the Republic, Plato describes the Philosopher King as one who loves true knowledge as opposed to the knowledge of simpletons. As Plato claimed, true knowledge isn't the knowledge of forms, well, is the knowledge of forms, which are the ideas behind concepts. Now, what does this mean exactly? Well, let's say a baker's dozen of muffins is our concept. That means that 13 muffins is our idea. We can add an idea by turning the muffins into blueberry muffins. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't pretend to be the right man for the job. I probably couldn't handle the pressure of running a corporation, let alone a government. I mean, the office of the President of the United States has the magical power to turn anyone's hair gray. Imagine if the President was the sole ruler of this country. He'd make every decision about governance and his will was law. This may seem great for the President, but the truth is quite contradictory. Because I believe that people usually want to help other people as long as it suits their own agendas, I'm sure that he would kill himself within the first month. And not to mention the immense political, pre immense media pressure he'd be under. I think the Philosopher King is a superior kind of ruler, and I like this kind of government. So I'll give the Philosopher King a 9, but any other kind of autocracy a 3. Next up, despotism. A despotic state slightly differs from an autocratic one, because in a despotic state, a single group can have total power, rather than just a particular individual. There is one more difference. In a despotic state, the ruler or rulers of the nation govern by their own will, while in an autocratic state, the ruler governs by fixed laws that he created. Despotism by group is the superior version simply because it has some kind of restrictive power. If each member of the governing group has the same amount of power, the group's decisions would likely be determined by popular vote, thereby dividing the ability to rule equally among its members. On the other hand, despotism by individual is much worse than group despotism and the autocracy because of the problems with absolute power. One, just about everyone wants to have absolute power over others, or at least themselves. So the despot is likely to be overthrown by the people, which cripples or destroys the nation's government. Two, the despot will be under even more pressure, pressure and stress than the autocrat because he would likely want to appease the masses of dumbasses under his in his domain. And even though he has the power to change things to suit the population's desires, the population's desires can change quite frequently. So if he doesn't cater to the population's whims every now and then, it would probably revolt. This version of you blow me and I blow you is called enlightened absolutism. So, how is this government fair? If a group is in charge, it gets a four. If one person is, it gets a 2. The reason despotism didn't score above 5 is because it eliminates a set code of laws and replaces it with a number of people's wills. What is legal today could be illegal tomorrow, and that is a serious problem. 
The idea of enlightened absolutism came about during the Enlightenment in an attempt to defend despotism. In an enlightened absolutism, or an enlightened absolute government, the despot holds the nation in a relatively loose grip. The despot would do this in order to maintain his status as ruler with less fuel of rebellion. Anyway, that's all I have to say about it, really. I'll give the enlightened despotism a generous three. No one is happy all the time, or even most of the time. The ruler feels the fear that Danocles felt, and the people are essentially mud under the despot's heels. Now, the militant dictatorship is the most likely result of a revolution. During this phase of governance, the military governs the people. I absolutely hate this kind of government. Our police force is already militarized. Imagine the police running the show here in America. Not very pleasant, is it? They'll shove their nice stick up your asses more often if they don't kill you first. They'll throw you in a cage if you cross them, and they won't need to take you to court to get rid of you. Well, I admit there are a few people, a few good people on the police force, but to be a good cop, you have to be ruthless, brutal, and obedient to your superiors no matter what. Every police officer works for the government that employs them. The police are not your friends. If they sus don't suspect you of doing something illegal, they ignore you completely. If they do suspect you of doing something illegal, they will do everything they can to stop you from doing it. When they're doing this, they only follow proper protocol when they know they're being watched by a camera that they don't control. The average citizen's testimony is absolutely useless against the cops. I'm digressing. The point is, the military dictatorship is a horrible idea. I'll give the military I'll give it a two. It ignores individuals' rights, it ignores majority's rights, and it gives a violent group unlimited political power. However, there is one good thing about the system. It ensures stability, but because it does this by fucking civilians in the ass with its big, mighty cock, it doesn't deserve any more than a two. Last on the agenda is totalitarianism, wherein the state controls every aspect of public and private life. If you take a shit in a totalitarian toilet, you could be fined for pollution. If you wipe your ass afterwards, the state could send officer friendly to make sure you don't flush, and if you do, the dickhead will be authorized to fuck your shit up. But enough about what a totalitarian state can do to you. Let's look at why and how they can get away with it. Dictators of every stripe have told us that the only way to protect our freedoms is to limit them. And that state sentiment is the backbone of totalitarianism. The state most often uses propaganda to wash its hands of the blood, sweat, and tears of its citizens. It uses the mass media to distract, delude, and divide the population so the rulers of the nation can get away with horrible crimes against humanity. Totalitarian dictatorships are best for the elite and worse for the common man. Thanks to this, totalitarianism receives a 1. Historically, the dictatorship has been extremely brutal towards the masses, and if it didn't have the ability to stay in power, it would receive a 0. Now, you may be wondering why the militant dictatorship did better than totalitarianism, since both of them are so similar. Well, it's for two reasons. First, militaries are often longer lasting than governments themselves. They just change forms. Second, while military authority can only control your body, totalitarian governments can control both your body and your mind. And that's it. Overall, I give the dictatorship a five and a half. It often sucks, but when it works, it really works.